The Daily Beast is an American news and opinion website focused on politics and pop culture. In a 2015 interview, former editor-in-chief John Avlon described the Beast's editorial approach. We seek out scoops, scandals, and stories about secret worlds. We love confronting bullies, bigots, and hypocrites. In 2018, Avlon described the Beast's strike zone as politics, pop culture, and power. Topic: History. The Daily Beast began publishing on October 6, 2008. The Beast's founding editor was Tina Brown, a former editor of Vanity Fair and The New Yorker as well as the short-lived Talk magazine. Brown stepped down as editor in September 2013. John Avalon, an American journalist and political commentator as well as a CNN contributor, was the site's editor-in-chief and managing director from 2013 to 2018. The name of the site was taken from a fictional newspaper in Evelyn Waugh's novel Scoop. In 2010, The Daily Beast merged with the magazine Newsweek, creating a combined company, the Newsweek Daily Beast Company. The merger ended in 2013, when Daily Beast owner IAC sold Newsweek to IBT Media, owner of the International Business Times. In September 2014, The Daily Beast reached a new record of 21 million unique visitors a 60% year-over-year increase in readers, accompanied by a 300% increase in the overall size of its social media community. In May 2018 Avlon departed from the Beast to become full-time senior political analyst and anchor at CNN. Avlon was succeeded by executive editor Noah Schachtman. In March 2017 former chief strategy and product officer Mike Dyer left for Intel. In May 2017, Heather Dietrich was appointed president and publisher. Editorial stance In an April 2018 interview, Avalon described the publication's political stance as, "...nonpartisan but not neutral. What that means is we're going to hit both sides where appropriate, but we're not going for mythic moral equivalents on every issue." In April 2017 Avalon discussed the organization's approach on the Pointer Institute's podcast saying, we're not going to tow any partisan line." In December 2017 NPR reported about the Daily Beast's bipartisan approach to its political reporting. Editor-in-Chief John Avalon began pairing reporters from both the right and left sides to cover stories on the White House in particular, they are using both Asa and Subsang, formerly of Mother Jones, and Lachlan Marquet, formerly of the Heritage Foundation, to file stories on the Trump administration. Avlon commented about the approach, saying, "We're nonpartisan, but not neutral." And so, bringing these two perspectives together, I think, helps us stand out from the pack. Executive editor Noah Schachtman describes the editorial style as. Some of the spirit of the old school New York tabloid and match it with the pace of digital journalism. Schachtman continues, What we did is really put an emphasis on scoop, scoop, scoop. That has really combined for what I think is the best read on the net. The Washington Post media critic Eric Wempel described the Beast's direction. Pound for pound, it is an impressive operation. As I see it, they do a few things well, they bang the phones, they don't always follow the same story everyone else is doing and they are fast. The illustrational style created by director of photography Sarah Rogers and used at the top of every article has been described as jaunty collage and pop art illustrations. <laughs> Format A feature of the Daily Beast is the Cheat sheet, billed as must reads from all over. Published throughout the day, the cheat sheet offers a selection of articles from online news outlets on popular stories. The cheat sheet includes brief summaries of the article, and a link to read the full text of the article on the website of its provider. After the launch, the site introduced additional sections, including a video cheat sheet and book beast. The site frequently creates encyclopedic landing pages on topical subjects such as President Obama's inauguration, the Bernard Madoff Ponzi scheme, Michael Jackson, the Iran uprising, and the U.S. Open. In 2014, The Daily Beast became majority mobile and released an iOS app, which Neiman Lab described as, "...the dawn of the quantified news reader." 
Contributors to the publication include notable writers and political activists such as Anna Marie Cox, P. J. O'Rourke, Majid Nawaz, Olivia Nutzi, Mike Barnacle, Noah Schachtman, Michael Tomaski, David Frum, Stuart Stevens, Megan McCain, Peter Baynard, John Favreau, Kirsten Powers, Aaron Gloria Ryan, Daniel Gross, Michael Moynihan, Jamel Bowie, Lloyd Grove, Daniel Claydman, Jackie Kucinich, Christopher Dickey, Leslie H. Gelb, Dean Obidala, Matt K. Lewis, Ron Christie, Josh Rogan, Eli Lake, Nick Romeo, Christopher Buckley, Bernard Henri Levy, Eleanor Clift, Patricia Murphy, Michelle Goldberg, Martin Amos, John Avlon, Joshua Dubois, Joy Ann Reed, Goldie Taylor, Michael Weiss, Jimmy Breslin, Ayan Hersey Alley, Mark McKinnon, Rick Wilson, Torre, journalist, Kim Dozier, Shane Harris, Gordon Chong, Ira Madison III, Harry Siegel, Mark Ebner, Kylan Hunter, and others, including Brown herself. In July 2016 influential food critic Mimi Sheridan was added. In May 2017 Pulitzer Prize-winning national security reporter Spencer Ackerman left The Guardian and joined The Daily Beast. When asked about the move Ackerman said, "...the Daily Beast is the place to do the kind of journalism that matters most right now." In June 2017 Huffington Post senior political editor Sam Stein announced he is joining The Daily Beast in the same capacity. Popularity In early June 2014, Capital New York republished a memo by outgoing CEO Rona Murphy, stating that the Daily Beast's average unique monthly visitors increased from 13.5 million in 2013 to more than 17 million in 2014. By September 2014, the website reached a new record of 21 million unique visitors. It was a 60% year over year increase in readers, accompanied by a 300% increase in the overall size of its social media community. In 2015, Ken Doctor, a news analyst for Neiman Lab, reported that The Daily Beast is, one of the fastest growing news and information sites year over year in the general news category. During Avalon's leadership the Daily Beast doubled its traffic to 1.1 million readers a day and won over 17 awards for journalistic excellence. In a 2017 interview George Clooney complimented the organization's development stating, I really do love what you guys are doing over there, you've stepped up the game considerably from when it started, and it's fun to watch. Awards. The Daily Beast won a Webby Award for Best News Site in 2012 and 2013. Also in 2012, John Avlon won National Society of Newspaper Columnists Award for Best Online Column in 2012 for The Daily Beast. In March 2012, Book Beast won a National Magazine Award for Website Department, which honors a department, channel, or microsite. Anna Nemstova received the Courage in Journalism Award in 2015 from the International Women's Media Foundation. Also that year, Michael Daly won with the National Society of Newspaper Columnists Award in the category of online, blog, multimedia, over 100,000 unique visitors. In 2016, the Los Angeles Press Club nominated several of the Beast's writers, including ML. Nestel for Arts, Entertainment Investigative, Brandy Zadrozny and Ben Collins for Best Celebrity Investigative, Malcolm Jones for Best Obituary, Lizzie Crocker for Humor and Tim Tiemann for Industry, Archard News. Also nominated for Best in Field were Kevin Fallon for Industry, Arts Soft News and Melissa Leon for Industry, Arts Soft News. The Association of LGBTQ Journalists or NLGJA nominated both Tim Tiemann 2016 Journalist of the Year and Heather Borner Excellence in HIV, AIDS coverage. In 2017 NLGJA awarded Jay Michelson for his coverage of GOP anti-LGBT legislation and Tim Tiemann for reporting on ALS. In 2017 the website won three New York Press Club Journalism Awards in the Internet Publishing categories of Entertainment News, Crime Reporting and Travel Reporting. In December the Los Angeles Press Club's National Arts and Entertainment Journalism Awards announced the platform had won four awards for 2017 reporting including investigative articles about the Nate Parker rape case, comic Bob Smith's struggle with ALS and remembering Bill Paxton. In 2018 the trade magazine Digiday awarded the Beast's Cheat Sheet for Best Email Newsletter. Beast Books 
In September 2009, The Daily Beast launched a publishing initiative entitled, Beast Books, that will produce books by Beast writers on an accelerated publishing schedule. The first book published by Beast Books was John Avlon's Wingnuts How the Lunatic Fringe is Hijacking America. In January 2011, they published Stephen L. Carter's The Violence of Peace America's Wars in the Age of Obama. Also in 2011, Beast Books published Nobel Peace Prize winner Lima Bowie's memoir, Mighty Be Our Powers. Controversies Plagiarism In February 2010, Jack Schaefer of Slate.com claimed that the chief investigative reporter for The Daily Beast, Gerald Posner, had plagiarized five sentences from an article published on the Miami Herald. Schaefer also discovered that Posner had plagiarized content from a Miami Herald blog, a Miami Herald editorial, Texas Lawyer magazine and a health care journalism blog. Posner was subsequently dismissed from the Daily Beast following an internal review. Taliban denouncement A 2013 article about the Taliban seeking peaceful negotiations in Afghanistan promoted a direct response from the organization. The Taliban denounced the article as false and claimed the Daily Beast violated the basic principles of journalism. Topic: Nico Hines 2016 Olympics article. On August 11, 2016, The Daily Beast published an article titled "I Got Three Grind R Dates in an Hour in the Olympic Village," written by Nico Hines, the site's London editor, who was assigned to cover the Olympic Games. Hines, a heterosexual married man, signed up for several gay and straight dating apps, including Tinder, Bumble and Grind R, and documented his experiences in the Olympic Village. While not specifically naming names, Hines provided enough detail in the article to identify individual athletes, leading to widespread criticism that this information could be used against closeted gay athletes, especially those living in repressive countries. Facing intense backlash online, The Daily Beast edited the piece to remove details that could allow athletes to be identified, and editor-in-chief John Avlon added a lengthy editor's note. Criticism challenging the value of the piece continued, and The Daily Beast eventually removed the article altogether and issued an apology. In March 2017, Heinz issued a formal apology for his actions, and it was announced by the website's editor Heinz would be returning to The Daily Beast. Following a lengthy period of intense reflection, Andrew M. Seaman, Ethics Committee Chair for the Society of Professional Journalists, called the article, Journalistic Trash, Unethical and Dangerous. The National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association stated, The reporting was unethical, extremely careless of individual privacy, and potentially dangerous to the athletes. Vince Gonzalez, professor of professional practice at USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism wrote, "...I think this borders on journalistic malpractice." The president of GLAAD, Sarah Kate Ellis, wrote, "...how this reporter thought it was okay—or that somehow it was in the public's interest—to write about his deceitful encounters with these men reflects a complete lack of judgment and disregard for basic decency, not to mention the ethics of journalism." References External links Official website Video, PSFK Conference NYC, New York New Media PSFK, 7 May 2009 Edward Felsenthal at the PSFK Conference NYC, New York New Media Neiman Journalism Lab, The Daily Beast Encyclo, an encyclopedia of the future of news. Retrieved 1 April 2012.